Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's uh, session. My name is Ahmed Zaini. I manage MetLife's Disease Prevention and Wellbeing Department in FICOV. I'm seeing a lot of familiar uh, names. Thank you for uh, joining our webinar series for the year 2022. Uh, I hope everyone had a fantastic summer. We, uh, uh, I think this is our first post summer uh, webinar and for that we wanted to uh, do something different to talk about something that is maybe a little bit unusual when it comes to the theme that we cover during the year, but uh, it's somewhat, it's uh, something that has been generating a lot of interest. We've been seeing uh, record registrations for this topic. I was just chatting with uh, Sam uh, just uh, a few minutes um, earlier, and today I'm in the office and I've been getting a lot of questions about today's topic, and we're really hoping that uh, you find it uh, valuable. Uh, some housekeeping before we start. So, as usual, the session is being uh, recorded. The recording will be shared with you after uh, the session, around maybe a week or two weeks after. Typically, uh, they are posted on our MetLife Gulf YouTube channel, so the channel name is MetLife Gulf. However, the direct link will be shared with you immediately after the webinar. Um, both Sam and I are very sorry for some reason. Both our cameras are not working for some reason. It has like uh, it's not on purpose. We would have both absolutely loved to be with you in uh, in a more personal way, but I know what's going on. Both of us are uh, our cameras are not having it. And uh, of course, uh, please uh, feel free to send us your questions in the chat box anytime during the session. So if you're joining through uh, your PC or laptop, the chat function is going to be on your right hand side. If you're joining through your mobile device, uh, the chat function is going to be the button section of your uh, WebEx app. All right, with this out of the way, today's session, the parent as a role model, not really a topic that needs a lot of introduction, I and Sam and I have been really chatting before the session, and we firmly believe that this is not something that there is no clear cut right or wrong. We're all trying to do the best that we can. I think this session is of particular interest to everyone. So, for example, I'm not a parent myself, but I think for everyone who is a parent expecting soon or sees it uh, somewhere in the future, this is something that maybe we can talk about in a in an interactive way. There are a lot of experiences going around, even if I'm not a parent, I was just sharing, sharing with uh, Sam about, for example, I'm seeing uh, how what I'm seeing, like in terms of uh, parenting styles and outcomes with my immediate families, we all have been impacted in one way or the other by how our parents interacted with us and continue to interact with us and how we interact with our children. A fluid topic, something that uh, works today did not work uh, a generation before, definitely wouldn't necessarily work 10 years ago, wouldn't necessarily work five years from now. Uh, in the age of social media and the age of uh, a changing world by the day, uh, a lot of things are actually very fluid and we're mostly trying to do the best we can as we go. For the little precious time that we spend with our children, they look at us as their first teachers and their role and their role models. Uh, they are maybe uh, more impacted by what they see their parents doing and not necessarily what they say. So it's very important for us to be conscious of what kind of lessons I may be giving my children, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, today, for our guest speaker, like I'm very excited to welcome with us Sam Common, who joins us from uh, Skillbase. He has more than 30 years experience in um, leadership and, develop and personal development. Uh, Sam, this is not the first time that we have you with us as our guest panelist, but I am absolutely thrilled to have you with us today. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Really very excited for today's webinar. Uh, please take it away. 
Thank you very much, Ahmed. And can I just say thank you for such a comprehensive um, introduction um, to the event, which has really positioned it um, so, so very clearly. Yes, my name is Sam Coleman, uh, working today for Compsite Guidance Resources, your employee assistance programme. And thank you so much for inviting me to be on this event. Such a, an exciting um, subject area, this one, and of course, such a massive subject area uh, to try and do justice to in about 45 minutes or so. Uh, there is, of course, no textbook answer to anything we're going to talk about um, today. It's really all about just our awareness. And I can just really start off by saying, look at the title of uh, this, this uh, webinar, uh, Parent as a Role Model. You know, there is nothing harder than role modelling. We do it all the time at work. We want to give off uh, a good impression of ourselves, to appear professional, to get things right in front of our colleagues and managers. But, you know, when we are doing this as a parent, we are on show almost like 24-7. All the time we are in front of our, our children, they are watching. As Ahmed said, they can see and we are meant to be demonstrating best practice to our children. And of course, much of the time, that's exactly what we are doing, you know, and we, we are all doing a great job. I'm absolutely sure of that. Uh, but we usually think that the role modeling is around the, the bigger things like, you know, how do we manage um, a disagreement uh, with our partner in front of the child? Or, or how do we manage a crisis in the home, like a, a burst pipe or um, an argument with a neighbor or something going wrong? We think those are the sorts of things that we should be role modeling. But what about the smallest of things as well? Because our children are like sponges. They absorb so much that's going on. You know, they notice when daddy is speeding on the highway. You know, they may not say anything, but they see that, you know, they, we're going over the speed limit. And what message are we giving our child in that case? You know, when we react negatively, when our scheduled TV program is cancelled, or when we come in from work and we walk through the door and we throw our coat on the stairs or onto a chair. What does that actually teach the child? Even those smallest things, we are role modelling. So today really is about, and, and it's great that uh, this word has already been mentioned in the introduction, um, intention. Uh, it's about being an intentional parent. What are the behaviours that we want to demonstrate and do more of? But also, what are the behaviours that we want to stop? It's, it's an opportunity for you to pause for 40 minutes or so and to look at your life and think, well, how am I living my life right now? And the, and the way, uh, what's it doing in the way it instructs or impacts my children's lives? And that's not just about the things that you do and your behaviours, but it's also about your emotions and how we deal with them. And how we actually deal with other people's emotions as well. How are we, how in tune are we in our relationships, not just with our children, but with people around us as well. And a chance to maybe reflect on that and then decide if there's anything you, you want to change. And all of the things that we're talking about today can be the things that you can pass on to your own children. And what are we trying to do here? We're trying to make self-sufficient, capable, confident human beings that can one day go out there and have the best life that they possibly uh, can. So let's just have a look at our agenda about what we're here to uh, do today. So we'll talk about some of the behaviours that are passed down to us. Of course, you know, our behaviours, for the most part, have come from our parents or whoever was actually in charge of us as we grew up. That might, our parenting figure might have been our grandparents or it may have been an aunt or uncle or it might have been an institution. But generally speaking, for most of us, it will have been our, our parents. We are the primary role model for our children. And children don't have any knowledge or skills until they start looking at us. The person that they look to to imitate is usually um, their parent. Now, um, how uh, we teach our parents, we often think it's about telling them what to do. But, you know, children don't really hear. I'm sure that you've all got experiences where you've told your children to do something and they don't do it. Now, for some reason, it just sort of misses the mark. But if a child notices a difference between what the parent is saying and what the parent is doing, 
in the majority of times they will always pick up on the parents behavior they will copy parents behavior rather than what they're being told to do so whenever that contradiction is in place the actions will speak louder than the words so really what today is about when we look at that final uh, bullet there how can we be better role models by making changes in in the way in which we manage as some of the major things that we come, we come across in our life like the way in which we deal with stress or how we uh, how emotionally intelligent we are how we deal with conflict and of course there could be many many other things uh, that will come up too now what I, I want to do is really just uh, make a start by thinking about um, where did we actually get our modeling from and start off by thinking about our parents or the people that were in charge of us as we developed because our children and ourselves we we're, were much more in tune than our parents ever realized in picking up and um, behaviors so i'm going to go through two slides now uh, which have a list of questions and i don't need you to answer these questions but what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to think about some of the behaviors that your parents passed on to you or that you witnessed that you choose to use in your life as a parent what are the things that you've picked up from your parents that you think have been valuable but on the other side what are the things that you picked up from your parents that you thought you know i choose not to do that with my own parenting and with my own children and this is just to really give us some self-awareness about the choices that we've made as parents so let's start with our first slide um, and the first question i'm going to ask you and again just think about this were your parents able to talk um, calmly about difficult issues? And, and what was their, their ways in which they modeled their communication? And, and was that done in a, in a respectful way? So not only uh, between your parents, but also within the family unit. What was communication like, basically? So have a think about that. Think about next, um, did your mother or father have difficulty expressing uh, their feelings? We grow up now in a, in a world where we're really encouraged to share a lot more, where we're meant to be emotionally intelligent and to be open. But did you grow up with parents who found it difficult to exp express their feelings? Did they hold back in any way? Thinking about uh, both your parents, uh, was one of them more dominant? Did one take more control? Did one of them put, put, potentially put the other parent down? in front of you? Or did one ab abdicate responsibility to the other parent to, to maybe deal with things like conflict, to maybe uh, be the one that was the one that did all of the disciplining? So which parent seemed to hold the power? Maybe uh, the father figure uh, didn't necessarily um, show uh, their emotion, or maybe they did it but only to show anger because they were the one that was uh, more stoic or maybe took control. I, I can remember hearing a, a, a friend of mine's mother say, wait until your father gets home and finds out what you've done. And she would defer discipline to the father. Well, by the time the father came home, the child didn't know what they'd done wrong because it was five hours earlier. So, you know, was the father the one that kept their emotions under wraps, but then did all of the disciplining? Um, and how did your parents manage when there was pressure? You know, did they have a relationship with quick fixes that gave them support? You know, did they turn to having a drink of an evening or, or maybe at weekends recreational drugs or, or maybe uh, nowadays it might be a, a, a bizarre relationship with food? And so did your parents have dependencies that you witnessed, that you noticed whilst you were growing up. And the final one uh, on this slide, did your parents actually find it difficult if they had um, a needs or issues uh, to express? Did they find it hard to express those? If they were going through a tough time, did they bottle up their emotions? Did they teach you that it wasn't okay to cry, that it wasn't okay to say when you're unhappy or sad? Uh, and hold all of those emotions uh, uh, to themselves. So let's have a look at another list of questions. What about the work ethic within uh, your family as you were growing up? Um, did you have parents that weren't around? 
did you maybe have to come home from school and let yourselves in or maybe a parent was really busy at the weekend and couldn't support you in your activities or your interests maybe work was the number one dominant priority for one or both of your parents what was the work life balance like as you were growing up did you have parents who maybe were perfectionists they really uh, liked everything just so and they strived with really high standards not just for themselves but maybe they passed those on to you did that make you feel driven did it maybe even uh, put you under pressure we know that uh, pet when parents are authoritarian dictatorial and like things done in a specific way because they're perfectionists that that can actually increase the likelihood of depression and codependency on children later on down the line simply because the child never thinks they'll ever get anything right uh, and therefore they won't make a decision or they won't problem solve because they live in fear of not living up to the expectations of their parents did you ever have a parent that maybe put themselves down maybe was a bit disparaging about their appearance about their weight about their styling um, i've got a very good friend from school and every time as she starts a sentence she says things well like well i'm not very good at or i'm not as good as my sister i can't cook like her i can't um pick clothes like my other sister all the time she's always putting herself down and it doesn't give um a role model of somebody who has any confidence about what they do even the simplest things so what sorts of things did your parents say maybe where uh, they gave way that they weren't confident about something and what about routines and organized and um, you know children love a structure children love routines even you know when we try to get them to go to bed at seven o'clock or eight o'clock they may not like it but actually the routines are really good for children did your parents have really good routines and systems in place so that you knew where everything was so you knew how things stood i certainly grew up believing never to go into debt. The only debt you ever would have would be a mortgage to buy a house, but never go into debt on your credit cards. Never have anything until you can afford to buy it outright. Now, I've strayed away from that, um, but I'm always mindful about paying bills. And that's something my, my parents very simply passed on to me. And one final point on this slide before I come over to you. Um, did, you did your parents have a social network? Uh, did they belong to clubs or or uh, the church or did they have certain friends that they went out with uh, basically did they have a social life uh, because when people have um, a network around them it passes on that you know part of the, the human condition is that we like affiliation certainly we've learned that uh, during the pandemic you know when we've been told we can't be with people but did your parents have other people around them outside of the family to set an example that it's good to have um, support around you. So with all of those questions, I know that's a lot of information. Um, you know, it might have given you an idea of some of the things that you choose to carry through in your parenting style and some of the things that you choose not to. So I'd just be interested to ask you now two questions. So reply in the chat facility. What things that your parents have done have you chosen to carry on with your children what skills behaviors or values are you taking from your parents to pass on right we're already getting a few responses respecting elders financial planning planning for the future being truthful and honest mm -hmm. the importance of education befriending my kids well i like that one <laughs> uh, conversation to be organized work hard and routine like lunch time dinner time oh, prayer that, time that. to love my work discipline and being respectful while talking to others good manners being humble be yourself and show yourself Fantastic. What, what a great list. And, you know, I could I could pick up on all of those and we could talk about every one of those. 
but you know some of those things in that list will all resonate with us and we'll think yeah absolutely you know i have to do more of that or yeah that's really important and for others of us we might think well you know that that's not too important for me so these are you know specific to us as individuals it's really interesting someone mentioning you know eating times and lunch times because nowadays you know look how that's changed how often do we come in and we all eat at different times when i grew up we had breakfast lunch and supper together there was no doubt about that but even that has changed within um, our society now um, and manners again you know i look around and uh, i just see a real difference in how um, we've we've actually evolved with manners uh, now as of course there's no right or wrong with those and uh, it's great that you've picked up some of those and are now espousing those with your own children now let's think about the converse of that what are the things that you you don't want to do with your children or when you look back at your parents you think do you know you kind of got that wrong and that's absolutely fine because remember our parents were doing their best so for example you know i grew up believing that you could only have tea if it was really really strong i thought that's what tea was like and i hated it and i also remember that toast had to be really well done almost burnt and i think it was when i was about 27 i suddenly realized I didn't have to make my tea or toast like that. That was my parents' way of doing things. And it didn't, I didn't have to do that. I could change. So what things are you changing that your parents demonstrated that you'll do differently with your children, no matter how big or small? Over to you again. We still have more coming in, um, respecting wife and respecting spouse, we got this separately, so I'm guessing this is a popular one to put my kids first, to accept more than to expect. I love that. Yeah, um, lovely. Micromanagement, mm -hmm. anger, Uh, controlling my children, being aggressive and letting things happen, show my sadness or worries. It's important to do a nine to five job, not to compare with other kids. Right. Okay. Lovely. Again, um, you know, a absolutely great list. And you know, it's okay that we can look at our parents and think, you know, I don't like the way you did that and you didn't get it right. For you, that was okay. Um, doing that as a parent was okay. I didn't like being on the receiving end of that and I'm not going to do that with my children. You know, when we get things like, you know, children being, you know, micromanaged or or parents, how they showed their anger or aggression. Um, certainly, you know, when I uh, spoke to my own mother, she had a very, very violent parent, uh, a father. And um, she said she vowed, as a, even as a child, that when if she ever had children, she would have bring bring her children up very differently. And she certainly um, did that. And that's absolutely fine to to maybe move away from the examples that your parents have set. And there are so many different things that we can um, do with our children. And of course, you know, we want to model certain things with our children. And there are there are sort of core areas that are really important to get right. I'm going to share with you five things that we can do um, with our, our children that are really important. These are not by any means the only things that we can do with our children. I'm going to take you through um, each one of these in a little bit more detail. Of course, there are many other things like, you know, uh, gratitude, how our children deal with gratitude, maybe instilling a faith in our children, encouraging them to be empathetic, compassionate, maybe their motivation, um, about, you know, as some of you said, you know, working hard and, and learning and being on a constant journey for learning. What about, you know, resilience and adaptability? All of these things. Of course, I can't talk about all of those today. So I've just I've got a handful here that I want you to, I just want to share with you that are really important things to maybe set our children off, you know, uh, on, on the journey uh, in the right way. Let's start off with that one about um, self-care 
and uh, looking after ourselves, you know, and stress management. You know, of course, you know, our parents, our children will, will look to us. When we take care of ourselves, we're setting an example for our children that we value ourselves, we value our health, and that they should do the same as well. And, and this means about, you know, incorporating, you know, behaviours into our life so that children also do that too, that they actually see the benefit of these things. Now, I'm not going to lecture about the importance of, of exercising regularly. We all know how important that is. But maybe, you know, how we demonstrate that. Maybe rather than, you know, just sitting uh, watching TV, we go out for a walk during the evening. Maybe that we avoid um, talking badly about exercise, you know, saying things negatively about it, like we can't be bothered or I haven't got time or, you know, I'd, I'd rather be, you know, having uh, another beer. Uh, maybe trying to let the children see that it's good to do it, even if we don't enjoy it, that we encourage them to do that as well. We don't want to exercise begrudgingly and make children think that it's not fun to do that. We know that we are, you know, we, we have a, a worldwide problem with childhood, uh, with child obesity. Uh, and that's not just down to lack of exercise, but that is a contributory uh, factor to it. Let's um, also be aware um, that it's very easy, the second bullet on the slide, very easy to become numb to our emotions, to avoid um, having discussions with our family about what's important or the things that are worrying us or things that are exciting us. Why? Because we're so busy, all we want to do sometimes is just switch off. And so what do we do? We come in from work, we eat something, we throw ourselves on the sofa and we watch TV um, for three hours. Well, you know, maybe trying turning off the TV and, and being around our children and talking with them. We found that out during the pandemic. You know, I think there was a massive increase in activities and board games um, that parents and children uh, started enjoying uh, just to do something different. Even just reading. We know that most parents read stories to their children. That's gone on for you know, a millennia. And why is that the case? Well, it's because we communicate when we are reading. When we're watching TV, we don't talk. It's as simple as that. When we read to a child, a child is much more likely to ask us questions and therefore we increase the communication. And, you know, that third bullet there already touched upon it. Let's just be really careful about the examples uh, that we set our children. You know, how many of us come in at night and then sort of maybe reach for a, a glass of wine or maybe say not now to our children. You know, don't don't talk now. This is daddy time. I'm just going to have my glass of wine or beer. This is this is my time now. And that almost sets up, um, you know, the, the idea that relaxation is linked to alcohol. Now, I know that's a bit extreme, maybe, but be really, really careful about what messages we're giving here. Is it saying that the only way we can wind down is if we resort to a quick fix or a, a dependency? Really think about what you want to communicate to your children about anything to do around drugs, alcohol uh, or eating habits. Really important that we do that. Um, the fourth one on there, you know, if you have a real issue, with um, dealing with your feelings or, or getting frustrated with the family, not knowing how to express yourself, reach out and get help. It might be talking to ComPsych, it could be just you know getting a, a, a therapist or counsellor or even just talking to a good friend and letting your child see that you're addressing it, you're modelling um, the way in which you experience your own problems and that it's okay um, to, to talk about them. And this self-care bit, it's really important that I think we link this to our, our work-life balance here. Um, I'm not going to talk vastly about that today, but you know, what example are you setting to your child about getting that balance right? And you might like to write down um, the next um, six categories. I'm going to just read them out to you now, and then I'll tell you what to do with these later on after this webinar. The first one is work. The second one is family. The third one is friends. The fourth one is health, your health. The fifth one is personal time for you. So maybe me time. And the final and sixth one is giving back, putting back into society. And that's six areas there that kind of make up 
um, the work-life balance that we have, the things that we can be doing. And I suggest that maybe after this event or at the weekend, you draw yourself a pie chart and you decide, you know, what your current life looks like with those six areas. And then look at it again and think about how do you want it to look instead? How would it be better to actually model to your children getting that work-life balance right for you? Now, work-life balance is different for all of us. Some people like to work 80% of the time and they love it. So that's fine. Some people only want to work 40% of the time. But getting that right and modeling it to your children, showing your children there are choices and all of those areas have some importance in life. So let's just move on um, to the second area that I want to talk about in areas we can model. And that is, of course, the really important one uh, uh, about acceptance and tolerance within um, society. Our world now is, you know, we have access. Uh, Ahmed already said about social media. We have access to everybody and everything. And we are so much more aware of different cultures, different people, different behaviours. And how we um, actually interact and show acceptance and inclusion for that is really important uh, in front of our children. It's really crucial that they respect the rights and feelings of other people. And we um, can teach that. But, you know, sometimes, um, uh, accidentally, really subtly, uh, we don't realise, but we leak information about what we approve of or don't approve of. We let our children see the types of people that we like or don't like even simple things like you know when we're on a bus or a, a plane and somebody's coming down the aisle towards us and we say i hope they don't sit near us straight away we are giving uh, an indication to our children that that person is not an okay person so really think about how you demonstrate your acceptance and inclusion uh, within your family unit within the workplace, within society, but certainly whenever your children are around, because you are teaching your child that certain people are important and uh, worthy of acceptance, and other people are not important and not worthy of acceptance. And none of us would want to be on the receiving end of that. And of course, that can be, you know, obviously around the major issues like, you know, racism, gender issues, about class, ageism you know I, I can remember my my son saying to me uh, when he was much younger uh, when i'd had a birthday why is somebody laughing at you daddy in in their birthday card the birthday card was a jokey card about what what my age was or how old i was getting yet why are why do stores still sell cards that joke about age what is that saying that it's not okay to be old one of our colleagues said about, you know, respecting elders and passing that on. You know, how can we do that when greetings cards laugh about age? So really mod modeling that acceptance. And in fact, I think our children are great ambassadors and are much better in some cases at, at in inclusion and accepting difference in society than uh, than parents uh, because they are growing up with that 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 is the, the right way to do things the third area i just want to talk about is about how we model um conflict uh, and conflict comes into our lives all of the time you know it's at work it's at home but and conflict is not a bad thing it's going to be there forever and it's really important that we show our children that conflict can be really positive. If we handle it well, then we can learn creative options out of conflict. If we don't allow it to damage the relationships. But remember, the minute uh, that we lose our, our temper, that our emotion kicks in, or we're patronising, or we yell at our child or another family member, we've kind of lost the battle. Nobody ever wins in an argument like that. And if we are arguing with our child, even if, you know, they're a teenager, we're still the parent. Um, but when we argue with the child in that way, we're almost trying to treat them on an adult to adult level and they won't get it. And the, the, the communication misses. And the problem with that, too, is it can erode our, the positive role model. So rather than entering, to con in, entering into conflict with our children, just have assertive conversations with them. Talk to them about actually what's going on. And I, I came across a great thing the other day. 
And it was when a, a parent said that rather than argue with my child, I just say to them, you know, I love you far too much to want to argue with you. And that just diffuses the argument. And when the child goes, yeah, but dad, you said this, dad, you said that. Yeah, I, I may have done, but you know, I'm not going to argue with you because I love you, son. I love you so much. I don't want to argue with you. And I thought, I wish I'd known that um, uh, many, many years ago. And remember, when we are in conflict, don't use those things that make you the powerful one. And just because you're the older one or the bigger one, when we yell, raise our voice, uh, think of the impact that has, especially on a younger child. It can really um, be very, very damaging. And also it sets a model that this is how we get our own way, just by bigging ourselves up and by bullying. And none of us would want a reputation as a parent, as a bully. If you have difficulty expressing yourself, find out about you know asserting your position in a way that gives you the opportunity to get your point across, have your rights respected, but also allowing other people to have their rights and needs expect, uh, accepted as well. And, you know, as a family unit, we've all got rights and uh, needs and expectations. And being respectful of those is, of course, crucial. As the parent, we may know what's best, but it doesn't mean that we can't hear out what our children want to say. That way we're showing that communication is really important, which really takes me on um, to uh, the next area about modeling and um, communication and listening skills. You know, how often when our child has come to us to show us something or to ask us to do something, we say, yeah, yeah, you carry on talking, you show me, I'm listening, I'm listening. And we're not. Maybe, you know, just sometimes stop doing what you're doing. Really, you know, get down at their level, look them in the eye and really, you know, listen to them, wholeheartedly listen and, re and respond back to them. Let them know that you've heard them by being able to repeat what they're saying or what they're asking. You know, it's no different uh, to um, active listening when we're in the workplace or with a client. But with our children, sometimes we can accidentally be dismissive because we've got so many other things to do. And I understand that. But I remember when my son brought me a picture once and I just quickly looked at it and I said, hey, hey, that's a, a great picture of a of a dinosaur. And he looked crestfallen and he looked up at me and he said, but daddy, it's a dog. And in that moment, I learned, you know, don't ever say to him, you know, hey, it's a great picture of a dog or a horse or a house. Just say, wow, that's an amazing picture. You know, tell me about it. And then he could tell tell his story. And uh, as I've already said, everybody has an important role within the family. You know, all of us need to feel that we can get our point across and give recognition you know, to your, to your children. It's really important. Allow them to know when they've done a great job uh, and make sure that you don't don't attach conditions like you're a, you know, I really love you when you're a good boy, because then the child hears daddy doesn't love me when I'm a naughty boy. So just say, I really love you uh, and and give feedback to your children, specific feedback. That was a great bit, a great thing you did with your sister, helping her to read. And, you know, you did that because you are such a caring little boy. You know, give them really clear feedback that is specific to them and what they do. That is a great confidence builder. And remember, of course, when you do enter into that conflict, be aware of your emotions and what it's saying, especially when we get into those difficult years um, with our adolescent children. And when they're learning their pattern in the world, they're learning how to navigate the world at a difficult time. Remember what that was like um, ourselves. And it's really important to, as a parent, to admit that, you know, we make mistakes. We don't get it right. And uh, being able to say, you know, sorry to your ch children. Um, I was wrong about that. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry I upset you. Let's see how we can move forward. The fifth and final area I just wanted to address is really around about um, social networks. It's really important that we show our children that it's, it's crucial to build those relationships, that they learn that having people outside the family, having networks that they can nurture, that they can build, and we, we learned that certainly during the pandemic, is so important by putting back into our community, by being involved with other people, because 
It's great if there are other people that our children can depend upon, that they, they can mutually support and that they can actually build relationships outside of the family unit as well. And that way, that really empowers them later on for when they start building relationships, not only uh, romantic relationships, but also in the workplace as well. If, if we don't demonstrate that we have relationships and become really insular, the only models that children will have are uh, their parents. And sometimes there needs to be more than that. I'll give you a very quick example. When one of my uh, sister's children went to university, she didn't want to be around at the weekend, the first week or two she was there. So her parents went and collected her and brought her back. It was about an hour and a half's journey. And what happened was that set a precedent. And for every weekend she was at university for three years, her parents brought her back home. And as a result, she has finished university and she has not carried through one friend from her years at university, simply because she wasn't around at weekends to network and build relationships. Sometimes we have to allow our ch children to feel that discomfort. And, and, you know, in that case, I truly believe it would have been much better if she'd been allowed to stay there and build some uh, relationships. Having other relationships around us, really, really important. I just want to end now just by saying, you know, be really kind to yourself here. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. Don't don't ever expect that there is. You know, and if you're anxious about your parenting, your children will pick up on that. They are so astute. Don't compare your parenting to anybody else. You know, don't say, well, you know, they do it better than I do. I wish I'd done it that way. It doesn't matter. Just learn from any mistakes that you make and move on. Remember that um, if you want to be perfect and you try and show that to your child, they will think that imperfection is not allowed and then they will be fearful in their lives of making mistakes. So be as, as good as possible parent you can be and it's okay um, to be imperfect along the way. And remember, you know, it is a hard job. It's the, probably the hardest job without any manual that we will ever do in our lives. So all of these things here are really important. You know, take time out, walk away from those difficult situations, build in the bolt holes and things that you need to do to recharge your batteries. Don't forget your hobbies, five minutes out, taking a deep breath, walking outside when things get too much for you. Remember there is support for you there, your friends, you know, networking, talking to other parents that you know and sharing what's working and what isn't working and laugh at those difficult situations. You know, when your child you know, spills that um, paint on the carpet, yes, it's annoying. Yes, you'll get angry first, but one day you'll look back on that and you'll laugh about it. So remember, keep everything on an even keel. Keep your, your sense of humor. And uh, I've already said, no parent is perfect. And mistakes are fine as long as we learn from them. If we keep making the same mistake over and over again, that isn't fine. But when you get something wrong with your children, learn from it, tell them what you're going to do differently in the future and move on from it. You know, we're not trying to make our children into mini images of ourselves. What we're trying to do is really empower them to be the, the best that they possibly can be. And that really takes a lot of energy, uh, flexibility and positivity on our part. Don't forget. If there's anything I've talked about today that, you know, you need to talk through at greater length, Homepsych is there for you and anyone that you share your home with 24 hours a day, seven days a week, confidential support, talk to somebody or even um, online information on the website. So that's everything I wanted to share with you. If you want to um, spend a few minutes now with any points or questions you'd like to raise, that would be absolutely great. Sam, fantastic session. Um, like, I found myself taking notes. Like, right. I just found myself, like, unconsciously grabbing a pen. And they aren't really, like, structured notes. Like, I really hope that my camera is working so I can show to the camera. It was more of doodles around lots of food for thought, uh, definitely, whether from uh, person experience. Uh, of course, the experiences that I've had with my parents. Uh, yeah. There were a lot of things like uh, that were shared by uh, all our friends attending that I could really relate to. 
uh, throughout my life or like whether uh, it was a direct experience for me with my parents or something that I see in my immediate family or my friends. So I personally think it was fantastic. I'm already getting a few messages that uh, it's uh, it was an excellent session. So thank you so much. We have five minutes, so we're trying to actually wrap up this session uh, like 10 minutes uh, to the hour, uh, just to give you uh, a little bit of time to recharge before your uh, next uh, engagement. Yes, thank if you. You're, if you're uh, like, uh, if you're working from the office, uh, maybe you could uh, like uh, take uh, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you're working from home, uh, try to hug your kids or kiss them before your next uh, meeting. So with that, we've already been getting uh, a bunch of questions I will try to uh, summarize or like maybe uh, pick up the most common ones. So, of course, for everyone joining us, uh, if you have any question that you would like to ask, uh, please drop it in the chat box or the Q&A section. So you will find that if you're joining through a uh, PC or laptop on your right hand side, if you're joining through the WebEx mobile app, you're going to find it in the bottom section. Um, one of the questions, it's not a common question, but actually it caught my eye. So in the example of, okay, I love you so much, so I'm not going to argue with you. Would that not be perceived by my kid as sweeping things under the rug? The, we, sorry, repeat the last bit. Wouldn't it be perceived as my kid as sweeping the topic under the rug? I, I, I don't. I don't think it means that we then don't have the conversation. I. I think what I'm trying. Well, I'm sorry if I'm misled. What I'm trying to say is, I. I love you so much. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to go into a fight with you. But we then can have the discussion. So you know, let's not argue, but let's sit down and let's talk about why this worked for you and why this didn't work for me. So you still have the conversation, but without the emotion in it of anger or irritation or frustration. So, um, yeah, thank you for raising that. I hope that clarifies it. Uh, it's not about avoidance. Absolutely not. Uh, I'm getting a few requests if we can go back to the previous slide um, with the, maybe with the takeaways. Um, again, lots of um, excellent feedback. Um, <laughs> actually, a couple of uh, notes that don't hesitate to reach out in case of any questions, please. Um, John, uh, Abel, please, uh, guys, feel free. Um, okay, uh, what is the best way to express my dissatisfaction about my spouse actions in a respectful manner? Is it okay to express this feeling in front of the children? Uh, you know, this is such a, it depends on your personal and family dynamic. I think if we, uh, if we do that in front of the child, it could undermine uh, the other partner. I think uh, the best way to do that is uh, uh, privately with your partner. Uh, and this is where emotion comes in as well. What we tend to do is we tend to uh, instantly need to react and say, you know, you can't do that or you should say that or well, you would have said that and the child is still there. Much better to say, I think personally to my partner, mm, I'm not sure I agree with that at the moment. Let's have a chat about that um, when the kids go to bed or can, let's have five minutes and go for a walk and, and discuss that and talk it through. You know, this our relationships are ongoing. We're learning about our partners all of the time. We don't necessarily want to do all of that in front of our children um, because, of course, it can make the child feel that there is, you know, there's, there's a discord between the parents, um, you know, and we certainly don't want uh, to teach uh, teach our children that. Uh, that you know we know of course that there's a, a 40 to 50 percent um a divorce or separation rate uh, between couples and so it's very hard for children um, even to build remote uh, romantic relationships themselves uh, these days and of course then they end up with real problems around you know loyalty and trusting other people if they see that in their parents so to me um it's trying to have that conversation offline Okay, one final question. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit of a dicey topic. So, I worry if 
I nurture my children to fear their parents, they would grow up and hate me. And I worry that if I'm being friends with them, they would not do anything I say. If you're being cross with them, was that if I'm being if I nurture my kids to fear their parents, they would grow up to hate me. Mm -hmm. And but on the other hand, if I'm being friends with them, they wouldn't listen to anything I say. So basically, if like if we can summarize it, it's fear of parents versus being friends with your children. Right. The, this whole thing about friends with children, um, you know, I've, I've, I've never been really comfortable with it. And um, I've, I've done quite a lot of reading around this now. And we aren't our children's friends. We are we are their parents. You've got your own friends and they have got their own friends. And anytime somebody says, oh, you know, my daughter's my best friend, I think, well, no, she isn't. She's your daughter. And what you do there is you blur the boundaries. And it's, you know, you can still respect your child and have them respect you by being their parent. You don't have to be their friend. Because if you are their friend, how are you going to discipline them? How are you going to tell them when you're fearful for what they're doing? How are you going to tell them when they're doing something wrong or dangerous? Because they're not going to listen to you as a parent. So to me, uh, uh, friends and parents are two separate roles. And quite a lot of research actually suggests that as well. Okay. Uh, I know we said last question, but this is the last class because I think it maybe impacts uh, a lot of us. How to deal with children eagerness to explore social media networks with all the bad things that are happening nowadays? You know, um, I'm not an expert on social media. My son was long gone before that became into uh, vogue. But I think that is about uh, controls that you can Im impose at home. You can put them on your TV. You can put them on their phones. You can uh, uh, have rules that say I can pick up your phone and I can look at it at any time that I want. You can I can walk into your room and I can see who you're talking to. And that's what you have to do. You have to be absolutely transparent about those things. And that is letting the child know why you're doing it. And you're doing it because it's a safety issue and because you care for them. And it's not and it's because you don't want secrets um, and that's really important that's it also about letting your friends and family know you know that they, they're not to say to your child you know uh, let's keep this between you and me don't tell your mum or dad it's that sort of thing as well it's about total transparency so it's about using those those controls and if the child to me isn't happy with those then there's another option that is don't have them uh, and and the child will soon change their mind then Fantastic session, Sam. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, we're getting a lot of uh, positive feedback on the session. Thank you for all our friends who attended today. We're looking to welcome you again to more webinars before the end of the year. Uh, Sam, hoping to have you with us again. This has Brilliant. been a fantastic session. Thank you, everyone. If you could go hug your kids, kiss your kids, and take care, stay safe, and see you soon. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.